Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining. I'm very glad to be here. My name is Celine Wolf. Um, let me begin with a few words about me. From watching the Jetsons when I was a child to my studies in political sciences and urban development, you can say that Cartesian, science-based, modern approach made me a typical product of the Anthropocene. I spent the past decade working in the field of the built environment, crafting storytelling behind architecture in cities, IoT, smart cities, building on Mars. The direction was a technological future. But within me, I had a growing urge, an itch for broader connection to the Earth. My rare encounters with untouched nature were when I was flying, and I hope you appreciate the paradox. I would see pure nature from above, like here in flying to Oslo and Colorado and think this is the most beautiful thing I ever saw. But I would also see monocultures, such as here in the US, cities like New York, Cairo, and extraction sites. I would read ecologists' publication urging urging to change the system, but I would also uh, follow building constructions and master plan realization and hear planners bowing at the power of technology. We can hardly overstress the relevance of the built environment for our global future. Cities occupy only 3% of the planet's surface, but the inhabitants use 75% of its natural resources. And we currently urbanize at a rate that requires the size of one city of London every seven weeks. So the disconnect grew bigger in me. It seemed that I had, you know, sort of taken the red pill that reveals an unpleasant truth and let go of the blue pill to remain in blissful ignorance. Until I saw a light, it was March 2019, and Paola Antonelli, the senior curator of architecture and design at MoMA, had put a show for the Milan Triennial. Broken Nature was the title. It was a breath, a breath of fresh air. Finally, the industry thought leaders were talking about responsibility. On the last hours of my trip, I was tired. I was about to head back to Berlin and I was wandering around to take as much of I could from this great show. I entered a room that I hadn't visited yet. It was pitch dark. And here's what I saw and heard. Bernie Krauser, the great animal orchestra. For 40 years, Bernie had recorded natural soundscapes, creating a library of nature through history. He was able to observe evolution from one year to another. He could even hear how removing one tree every 10 meters in a forest had a profound and damaging effect on the whole biodiversity of the area. For me, it was like a gate opener. I thought if removing one tree every 10 meters in a forest has such a drastic impact on the planet for decades, what about the construction of a road, a wind farm, an airport? So I started a quest on my own, not ready to grieve my attachment I had towards city. I had to find out what could be done. And I found it. I found it in regeneration. We place life at the center in every urban regulation and public policy decision. When we day imagining the city of the future, Biopolis, the way to conceive it is through regeneration. Biopolis is a climate positive city, repairing our planet's life support systems. We are moving from a human centered to a nature centered design. In Biopolis, Meeting the needs of all within the means of the planet is the cornerstone. We can see it well in the donut model developed by Kate Roworth, economist working for the universities of Oxford and Cambridge. No one is left in the hole in the middle of the donut, which represents the essentials of life, such as food, water, gender equality, political voices. And also we don't go over the outer ring of the donut, our ecological ceilings, our ecological boundaries. This way we preserve stable climate, fertile soils, healthy oceans, etc. And while the model may seem complex, major European capitals such as Amsterdam already translated that into city planning since the end of last year. 
So urban planning of a regenerative city evolves around two pillars, reduce and repair. Reduce sources on one hand, electricity, food, industry, transportation, buildings are reduced to bring emissions to climate neutrality. Climate neutrality being one step further than carbon neutrality, as it implies that all greenhouse gases emitted result in a net zero balance. And while it may seem far for which actually the European Commission just established a mission that supports 100 European cities to reach climate neutrality by 2030. On top of climate neutrality, the urban planning of a regenerative city fosters circularity. We'll talk more about it tomorrow. Away from the linear take, make, waste, extractive industrial model, we are into a collaborative model between governments, companies, communities and citizens. The mindset, reuse, share, own less, repair, remanufacture and recycle. The payback of such city planning is that public spaces are no longer single use spaces, but true commons. They prioritize people, not just movement. Waste is a resource producing energy and building material. Personal cars are replaced by pedestrian and cycling networks, as well as shared transportation. And buildings are flexible. Home is a workplace, offices are hotel, roofs are wind and food farms. But reducing is only half of the picture. Here to give you a sense of the balance to reach. Remember the donut model? Here is where we currently stand. If we zoom on biodiversity, which is one of the most important boundaries that we have overreached until now. Biodiversity, it's 9 million unique living organisms that inhabit the Earth, including us, the Homo sapiens. These organisms working together, they supply us with oxygen, clean water, they cycle carbon, they enable plants to grow and therefore to feed us. They keep the pest species and diseases in check regulate the climate. This is what we call the ecosystem services. And all the species, they don't act independently. This is what we call the trophy cascade. And the Homo sapiens in that picture, in the global biomass, represent 0.01%. We are the little tiny orange dot that we can't even see on that graph. But the results that we managed to achieve at the scale of our civilizations are the following. And today we are losing 200 species a day. So looking at the city planning of Biopolis is looking at an integrated scale in its environment. Reduce goes together with repair. Earth net gain. This is a central approach of urban planning and urban design to on one hand measure the impact each urban realization has on the planet's biodiversity and on the other hand increase the natural habitat and ecological features over and about what has been affected. Secondly, in Biopolis, urban planning leads to acting locally while thinking globally. So the urban policies incentivize through public procurement, taxes, subsidies, the local level. Self-sufficiency is a keystone of regeneration. So, for instance, food is organic, plant-based, locally produced in a regenerative city. Area buildings share energy resources produced within or close to the city, and they generate as much as they consume. Businesses thrive as they anchor into localization. So you can see that regenerative urban planning leads to regenerative economics. Last but not least, in Biopolis, city planning is linked to regional planning. The land use planning contains and delimits the human movements and business activities within urban nuclei, leaving space for thriving biodiversity and revived habitats. So under regeneration, we move away from a predatory land use rationale of humans on nature to one learning to respect the pace and cycles of nature. Over the past years, there has been an international obsession of tree planting, notably through the construction industry, praising the use of timber as a sustainable material. And the combo deforestation, reforestation has been an attempted strategy for repair. 
Nevertheless, the most efficient city and regional planning to repair planet's life support system is actually to not do anything. Rewilding is the focus of biopolis planning policies, not rebuilding. It means restoring areas where nature can take care of itself. So to imagine biopolis, you need to look outside the city where teams of ecologists work first on barren soil to help the land kickstart its own power to regenerate. Then they reintroduce missing species, such as hardy pigs, European bisons. This is the traffic cascade we talk about. And then for the next 20 to 30 years, the land is left untouched. Soon it's bursting with life. It's one of the best carbon sinks we can ever produce. It leads to natural capital vi vital to our survival to be nurtured. The good news is rewilding means doing less, costing less. The bad news is it happens for human beings are not. Wilderness can't be close to human presence as long as we're not ready to be eaten by a tiger in our, in our backyard. We therefore need to learn to contain our movement. And while rewilding may sound far away, in the UK environmental bill, which will be low in December, anyone constructing buildings or infrastructures will actually be required to leave their sites with 10% biodiversity net gain. And one of the instruments developers have is to partner with rewilding projects. So as a conclusion, to repair our life support system, the urban planning needs to be regenerative with two main pillars reduce and repair. We cannot leave out our role unless we commit to change not just what we do, but who we are and how we think. We disconnected ourselves from our living world, but reconnection is just before our very eyes. We can belong and we do belong. We will for sure have to invent new worlds. How do we name our relationship to the world? as human beings, if we are no longer separating ourselves from the living world? How do we name our economics if they are no longer based on predatory domination? How do we name a system where we care instead of one where we get? And everyone has a role to play, not just ecologists and scientists. Architects, urban planners, engineers have to commit themselves to discovering and telling their clients the hard truth. We are heading into the future. Now it's time for us to grow as species, not just ever larger and ever more consuming ones, but ever more intelligent, creative and conscious. Thank you everybody for your attention.